I was down with no way up And I needed some help Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free Good morning, Shiloh family and friends, and Merry Christmas! Happy Christmas! Merry Christmas to y'all! God bless your family, God bless your friends, and even God bless your enemies, don't forget about them. But today, we to remind you to follow us, like, and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Continue to share the Word of God. And right now, we just want to bring forth a word of prayer with you, and if all hearts and minds are clear, we just ask that you would just bow your head. Father God, today we would ask that you would just humble ourselves, Lord God, and that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord, and anything we did not pleasing in your sight. Lord God, we would just ask that you would have your way in this place, Lord God. I ask that you would lift everyone up right now, with the sound of my voice, Lord God, that you would touch them, their families, Lord, their loved ones, Lord God, their friends, Lord God, and I ask that you would just Whatever they may be going through, Lord, that you just make a way out of no way, Lord God. Allow a miracle to be done, Lord God. And Lord God, I ask that you would just bless me. The man of God is bringing forth the word today, Lord God. That it would touch somebody's spirit, Lord God. Touch their mind, their body, their soul, Lord God. And they would cry out, what must I do to be saved? Who is this Jesus that they speak of? And Lord God, I ask that you would just have your way, Lord. I can't express that enough, Lord God. I ask you your presence will fill this room right now, Lord God. And have all the glory and honor that you have for yourself, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Amen. I will be reading from Matthew 1, verse 21. And it says, And he shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins.
I am so glad to have you here with us and how God has blessed you through this time of us celebrating the Son of the Living God. Can you go with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1? The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. I'm going to begin reading at verse 26. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored, and the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. King James, be it unto me as thou hast said. I am the handmaid of the Lord. We're going to bury our thought there. And our thought for this Christmas day is get off the spiritual roller coaster in your life. Get off of your spiritual roller coaster. It'll make sense. Follow me. God is a God of absolutes. I know that's not strange for you to hear that because when we think about the nature of God, we know that he has absolute power. He has absolute control. He has absolute, the absolute ability to reign. He has absolute authority over everything. God is a God who is limitless in what he can do. So he's a God where he wants us to know that whatever he says, that is the bottom line, that is an absolute. Psalms 147, 4 and 5, listen to the psalmist back this up. The psalmist said that um, our Lord knoweth the name of all the stars. He calls them by their name. Great is his power. Great is our Lord of great power because that's who our God is. Isn't that something? God knows the name of every star. His understanding is infinite. The psalmist said he can call every star by name because he named it. That's the kind of God we serve. Jeremiah picks it up in Jeremiah 10 and 12. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. And he has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Listen to God. These verses only touch a small part of God's sovereignty, his majesty, and his righteousness. We need to know that God makes it clear all throughout scripture that he is a God of absolutes. And he really does it since he's a God of absolutes. He wants us to be people of absolutes. He wants his children to be children of absolutes. And you need to understand that means we have to have our understanding settled about who God is following. You got to know either he is or he's not. Either you will or you won't. Either you can or you can't. But you got to let God know that you trust him. God does not like fence sitters. You don't believe me? Go with me to 1 Kings verse chapter 18, verse 21. After Elisha is standing before Ahab the king, after the people are following Baal 
and God. God said, wait a minute, I don't like you following Baal and God. So Elisha got before Ahab and said, call all the prophets together, Baal's prophets, call everybody together. And this is what God told Elisha to tell the people. He said, I am the Lord your God. How long will you be caught between two opinions? If God, if Baal be God, serve him. But if I'm God, follow me. Did you understand what God said? He said, I'm tired of you being caught in this indecisive tone where you don't realize or you don't trust me or depend on my power. He said, I'm tired. I don't bless. I don't like and I don't help fence setters. You don't believe me? Go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, 16. You know the verse when God says, I know your works. He said, you are neither cold nor hot. Since you're neither cold, he said, I wish you were cold or hot, but since you're neither cold nor hot, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. All God is saying is, since you can't make up your mind whether you're going to stay hot for God or stay cold for God, you're going to sit there shivering, act like God can't get through or God can get through. You'll never understand God's full power until you make up your mind to know that God is a God of absolute. You remember in Matthew chapter 6 when he went back to his own hometown. And there he was, and he stood up, and they said, wait a minute, he, could, he had just got done doing miracles everywhere else. But when he got to his own hometown, you know the verse, he said, a prophet's not honoring in his own hometown because they thought they knew him, they were familiar with him, but they didn't trust him. And the verse says in verse 5 that he could only do, he could do no mighty works there. I like that. He couldn't do any mighty works, only heal a few sick people. That sounds like mighty works to me, but God said, I could do much more. Because verse 6 gives us the story of why he wanted to do works much more. If you go to Matthew 6 and look at verse 5 and 6, verse 6 is the verse you should look at. Because he said, I marvel at their unbelief. Do you know, after all God has blessed you with, how many times God has delivered you, the times that he brought you out, sometimes he marvel how you sit and let things beat you up and circumstances control you and mess up because God is a God of absolutes. He wants us to know that we have to trust him absolutely because that's who he is. And you know this because you've been in some situations. Here's what God said. You've been in some situations where you've allowed yourself to go through agony. Where you've allowed your emotions of fear and doubts and struggles. Come on, you stop them praising him. Let all this stuff just hit your mind. And you go through these emotions and God is saying, why are you doing that? He said, you know I can get you out. Or you find yourself in situations, because you're a fence setter. You find yourself in situations where you're strong one day, weak the next day. Trust him one day, won't trust him the next day. You find yourself sitting around overcoming something last week. Can't overcome it this week. You better stay with me. And the reason is, is because God wants you to be an absolute Christian. He wants you to know you got to settle some issues in your life. Follow me. This kind of up and down, on and off Christianity is what we call a spiritual roller coaster. God is sitting there saying, man, you got so much power on the inside of you. And you're sitting there now. You saw what I did last time. You saw the power I have in your life. And you're sitting there now like I can't come through. God said you're going this up and down and down and up. And the spiritual roller coaster stops you from getting the blessings that you would get. God has more and you can't get it because you won't make up your mind. You better hear me. Get off that spiritual roller coaster. You know what I'm talking about. Too many Christians, too many years, you've been serving God and you don't know when you're going to be strong, when you're going to be weak. You don't know when you're going to stand your ground. You don't know when you're going to let the devil push you around. But you got to make up your mind. Find that moment when you say, I will trust God no matter what. If anybody you know what? Let me just tell you this. You know, you know what a roller coaster does? So because we liken this uh, symbolism to roller coaster. Now, if you were a kid like me, I love riding roller coasters. When, when me and Marcy first got married, we loved going to the parks riding roller coasters. I said when I was younger, I loved riding roller coasters. And we would run and jump on a roller coaster. But any good roller coaster rider will tell you the roller coaster is not the only thing going up and down. Even as you're standing in line. Your heart is beating and you say, I love to ride it, but there's some danger and there's some things going on. So you get on the roller coaster and it's going up, 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 and you hear it cranking. And as it gets to the top, you might start thinking in your mind, why did I get on this thing? And then when you get to the top, at the top, it starts going. This, this is the part I love. It starts going downhill, zooming, zooming. That's when everybody starts laughing and, and, you know, and your hair is blowing. When I had hair, your face is sitting back by the wind and you're sitting there laughing. 
laughing and giggling, but you're still a little nervous. And just when you got you think you think you got it together, how many know what happens next? That's right, the roller coaster start jerking around these corners, and whoever in the seat with you, you crush them. Then they crush you, and you sit there getting ready, thinking as the roller coaster feels like it's about to tip off. Why did I get on this thing? But as soon as you hit the ground, you run and jump back on the roller coaster. Let me tell you why. Because the roller coaster does one thing that Christians should never allow to happen in their spiritual life. It takes you from being in control. And that's what happens. You let circumstances. Situations you in, when life throws you a curveball, you start running around. When God said, you were just strong yesterday, what happened? You're on this spiritual roller coaster. If anybody knows how to handle a spiritual roller coaster, up and down and struggling, you ought to know this Christmas message. It was Mary, the Virgin Mary, a 13, 14 year old girl put through some changes by the Holy Spirit showing up and God showing up, telling her what was going to happen. But Mary had enough sense to tell God in that 38th verse, she said, God, be it on your handmaid, be it unto me, as you said. That's the moment. You need one. Listen to me. That's what this message is about. It's about you settling down and quit wondering whether I'm going to be strong and make yourself be strong. Take control of your life. Quit wondering whether I'm going to go through this trial and think back how God already took you through trials. Quit wondering, am I going to be fearful today? Tell yourself, we're not going to be fearful today. At that moment, Mary took herself from being on this roller coaster that she was on, and she settled herself down and started this divine spiritual journey. God wants all of us and you're on it, whether you know you're on it or not. You're on a divine spiritual journey right now. And God is saying, everything is at your disposal if you'll just make up your mind. All of a sudden, Mary started thinking like Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, 13. She said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, Christmas is a time, is the best time for you to get off this roller coaster because it's the time when you remember how God sent his son down so you could be blessed. Christmas is the time when Jesus showed up and said, it's time for you to trust me. Here's what I want to do as I finish this message. I want you to say to yourself, I'm getting off. I'm tired of crying when I should have joy. I'm tired of being fearful when I should be strong. I'm tired of sitting there like I don't have help when I know God is my help. Tell yourself, somebody say this with me. I'm getting off this year. I'm getting off. I'm not going up and down anymore. I'm staying stable. Pastor Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or Mary started thinking like Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. And then she did the ultimate test, which is Job. When Job said, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Watch what the other part of that verse says. And I will maintain my ways in front of him. Here's what Job said. I don't even know what God's doing right now. But because he's such a good God, I'm going to maintain my demeanor. I will not allow myself to go through struggle because I trust God. I'm getting off. I'm getting off. Mary's going to show you how to get off. I'd like to tell you where I'm going. Three things Mary will show us in Mary's song. They're magnificent. It's a song that was that says, it's a song of Mary, an answer of a prayer, which says, I trust God. It's a song letting us know God's majesty. It's letting us know her trust in God. So Mary actually said three things that she was showing us that will help us understand how to get off of our spiritual world. Because you're interested. I know you are. Because somebody right now saying, I thought this house was supposed to live. No, it's not. There are saints out there that will stand up and fight to hold on to their power, their belief in God. I'm not going to let the devil just push me around. Christmas? Not, not now. No. First of all, you got to accept that God is your all in all. Now listen to me. He's your all in all. But the first thing Mary will show us is you got to accept that. God is a gentleman. He's not going to just push his way in. you got to accept that he's your all in all. The second thing you have to do when you know who God is, you got to accept you're special to God. Ah, too many saints out there don't realize how special they are that God chose them. And the last thing you got to understand is you have to accept the fact that whatever you need, 
God will bring it to pass. Whatever you need, except that God is your all in all. He's been doing this thing one sided. He, he's been showing you he's your all in all, but you haven't been accepting it. You got to know you're special to God. Accept you're special and accept him will bring it to pass. Let's, let's talk about it. So this chapter starts out, the Gospel of Luke. Our first point, accept that God is your all in all. Uh, the Gospel of Luke was written by Luke the physician. It's the first part of a two-part book written by Luke. The second book is Acts of the Apostles, a two-part understanding of the saga and story of Jesus Christ. But in Luke's gospel, he starts out in verses 1 through 3, just backing up what I told you already, that God is a God of absolutes. He's looking at third verse. He said, Theopolis, I'm going to show you this, the things that certainty of the certainty of the things that will come to pass. I want to land on that, the certainty. God is an absolute God. If he said it, it will happen. All you got to do is trust him when he says it. Here's what the Bible just said. God is a God of certainty. So Mary said, uh, let, me, let me just read what, what Mary said so, so we can be on the same page. He says, Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. She said, my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. This is the place to start. Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Can I talk to you for a minute? Mary, you must be crazy. Why is your soul magnifying the Lord? Here you are, an unwed mother. Here you are about to be ostracized by your community, excommunicated from the church. Here you are now engaged to somebody else. And your story is, I've been pregnated by God, right? Hello? And here you are now, you got a nerve when you made your mind up to say, uh, Lord, I'm your handmaid, be it unto me as you said. Listen to those words. God, I'm your servant. Be it unto me as you said. Come on, say that with me. God, I'm your servant. Be it unto me. What Mary was saying is so powerful. She said, I believe that nobody else, nothing else is as powerful and could run my life like God does. Here's what Mary said. I'm ready to trade in my plan for my life because I believe God has a plan for my life that's eternal and divine and will take me higher. God has a more noble plan. Here's what she said, what most of us have learned, because what Mary learned, why Mary said, I accept him, is the same reasons we will accept him because it's the same stuff we learned. While we were out there doing our thing, we found out we came to God. Man! God knows how to run my life better than I do. So why are you holding on to some stuff when you know already God knows how to run your life better than you do? Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And you know why? She said, because the first thing I understand is God can run my life better. That when I ran my life, I found myself doing trouble. I, I found out that I'm going to need him again. Somebody said, why do you serve God? I'm going to tell you something. One of the reasons I stay in line is not sometimes because I'm staying in my word. I'm going to make a confession. And somebody might not hear. I stay in my word. I stay trusting God. Somebody going to identify with me. I do it because I know I'm going to need him again. So I'm not biting the hand that feeds me. I'm not going to turn my back on the God. The all, come on, somebody. You are crazy right there. Why in the world would I not trust the God, the only one who's ever got me out of my trouble? Here's what God said. Why is Christmas the best time? Because Christmas, think about it. How, how, how you talking about Christmas in a roller coaster? Here's why. Because God looked down and said, nothing else worked. Everything I tried to do before I sent my son, didn't work. Go with me, watch this. He said, Abraham was good. Abraham got me my chosen people. But he couldn't get or break the curse of sin in their life. Matter of fact, Abraham was still fearful. It took him many, many times before he learned how to be the father of faith. He said, but Abraham couldn't break the curse in my life. Moses was good. Moses helped deliver you from Egypt. Moses helped you get through the Red Sea. Moses was great, but Moses took you out of Egypt, but he couldn't get the Egypt out of you. 
You know, God's people start making idols. I mean, it was God who delivered them, right? But they start making golden idols. Why do we do that? Because if we don't make up our mind, we're on this spiritual roller coaster. When I need him, I need him. When I don't need him, I don't need him. So God said, look, I done tried everything. I gave you Abraham. I gave you Moses. And David was good. He was a man after my own heart. But then he didn't know how to get off the roof sitting up there watching naked women. He fell because of his flesh. Solomon, the wisest man, I thought I had it made with Solomon. He took over the United Kingdom. But Solomon himself, let his heart be taken by the women that he loved. He fell from grace. Everybody, I can name them. So after I couldn't trust a man, I sent the prophets to tell you directly my will. The prophets, you will learn one time, then you go down another time. The prophets will tell you how to trust me, but then you didn't trust them. So I found myself saying, I'm going to give you to other nations. Let them enslave you. God said, something got to get you off this roller coaster. So all of a sudden, he said, I'm taking you to other nations. The other nations enslaved you. Some of you died, but you still wouldn't quit. Can you see this? God said, man, nothing's working. So then there was a council in heaven. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit got to talking together. And of course, because of Jesus' heart, Jesus said, Father, we got to go down and get them out of this roller coaster they're on for serving me. We got to make sure they understand something's got to work for them. And right in the middle of that conversation, Jesus Christ said, Father, make me a body. I'll go down. Can we talk to Christmas? God said, yeah, you can go down. What's going to happen? He said, well, I know because of the law, I got to give up my divinity. He took off his royal robe. He said, I got to, after I give up my divinity, I got to put on flesh. He said, I'll go down and be born in a manger. I don't want to come as a king. I want to come as a mere human. I want to come in a way that they may not understand because I got to bring them where we are spiritually. They like flashy things. I'm going to be born in a stall with hay and animals. They ain't even know I'm there because the ones who trust me, the ones who we call, are going to be the ones who find me. And Jesus said, and when I get down there, I'm going to let the angels. I see some shepherds in the field, and I'll let the angels and the shepherds say, there's peace on earth, goodwill to men. I'll let them know my arrival. Then I'll walk the earth, and I'll heal blinded eyes, and I'll raise people from the dead, and they'll see my divinity, and then I'll die on a cross in their place. I'll give them the ability to have supernatural power. Now, they will call on me, and I will bless them. And once I do this, nothing is going to be able to stop them. They'll get off that roller coaster. All they have to do is want to. What I mean is no weapon that is out there can stop them once I come. Uh, uh, no demon is going to be able to stop them once I come. No sickness is going to stop them once I come. No person is going to stop them once I come. All they have to do is want me. God said, that'll work. We have Christmas. Now I'm telling you. You got to make up your mind to get off the roller coaster. Look what Mary said. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Why did she say that? Let's look at what she knew so far. And what she knew, we knew. The Bible says that it starts after it goes to that fourth verse. It starts talking about Zacharias and Elizabeth. And Zacharias was a priest. These are the parents of John the Baptist. So it goes into the birth of John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ. And Zacharias was a priest of the Abia order, meaning the order of David, King David. God doesn't do anything by accident. He could have made him a priest of any order, but it was a priest of David, the one who loved God. God always puts in our lives the things that we need if we look at them with spiritual eyes. His mother, Elizabeth, was of the uh, daughters of Aaron. All of them were priestly people that came to a place where they actually we're living godly, serving God. But Elizabeth was barren. They were shunned. Uh, they were in that place. The one thing that a woman could never break it was like being cursed from God for not being able to have children. But the angels showed up to Zacharias while he was in the temple one day preparing the sacrifice and said, Elizabeth, even though she's past age, is going to have a baby. And you're going to name him John. And then the angel Gabriel showed him 
what this, who this child was, the forerunner of Christ, and what he was going to do. He was going to have a spirit like Elisha. And all of a sudden, we know, Zechariah said, how would this be? Because see, you name a child after the father's name or within the lineage of the father. But the Holy Spirit said, name him John. Can I tell y'all something? You better make sure you do what God said and what, not what man said. When you do what God says, comes supernatural power. So all of a sudden, he said, you shall be deaf and you will not be able to speak until the child is born. I know God wish he could do that with some of us all the time. Sometimes it's, it's the words we speak out of our mouth that take away our blessing. Hello, somebody. Sometimes it's the stuff we do to take a, I know I've done it. Messed up my own blessing. I've said some stuff and say, why did I say that? Come on, be honest. Mess up with me. I've said some stuff and know it was my own words that destroyed what I was going through. Which brings me to what Mary knew. What she knew because the angel was, was letting her see all this. Watch this. What Mary knew already was that God does not bless us according to who we are. Or just what we've done. Uh, that's a good place because I need you to understand something. Mary, I mean Elizabeth and Zacharias were righteous people serving God. And yes, she was married. Seems like God always has extra burdens for the children that he's going to bless. Can I give you a shout right there? You ought to be glad he puts extra burdens because it also gives you extra strength. Somebody's sitting there right now because you lift a burden that you couldn't have lifted if God didn't put it on you. And the only reason God put it on you because he knew you would lift it. Here's, here's the shout. Here's a real shout. God said, I want you to know, I'm not blessing you because of who you are and what you've done. I'm blessing you because of the plan I have for your life. Oh, Everything you go through, the reason you should not be up and down is because you should just tell yourself it's all a part of God's plan. The cancer, part of God's plan. Somebody walking out on me, it's part of God's plan. What does it mean? God said, when those things come to pass, it kicks in my will. When, when, when God's plan happens, power starts flowing in your life. So he told Zacharias, he said, no, no, you won't, you won't be able to speak until it's done. Not only that, but we also find that then Elizabeth goes to tell, it stops there and says Elizabeth now goes to tell Mary. Uh, it, it shifts real quick down to Mary's and the birth of Jesus Christ. Right? I, I can tell you the rest of the story. You know, they, when, when he was born and they asked uh, Elizabeth, uh, what should the child be called? And they, they followed God. Okay, so we, we know that part of the Christmas story. They followed what God said and they were blessed. No, you can call the kid, the child John, because that's what God said. Then it shifts to the birth of Christ. That's where we are in our story. The birth of Christ, it says, there was a virgin, a spouse to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. This is so powerful because we find out why God blessed them the way he blessed them. Because the angel came to Mary, Gabriel, and told her that she was going to be, she was going to conceive a child. It was a blessed child. Talked about the Messiah. Mary didn't have doubt. She just said, I don't know a man, but she didn't speak it in doubt. I don't have time to teach that. You understand, if it had been doubt, God would have responded to it, but it wasn't doubt. God knew her heart, which was still in faith. And all of a sudden, he told Mary everything that was going to happen. He told him what Jesus was going to do. He told him that Jesus was going to show up, the Messiah they had been waiting for. Oh, that's what Christmas is. Get off the roller coaster because Jesus is coming. But let's stop. Mary shouted because Jesus was coming coming. We ought to shout because Jesus is here. Do you know why? We ought to always trust God because every moment we needed God, he was right there. Come on, you can't find a time when God wasn't there. He may not come when you want him to come, but how many know there was a time that God showed up and did what he said he was going to do? She was ready to obey just because of what she knew was coming. We ought to be ready to obey because we can look back and know not only is he coming, he is here. I saw a sign that says Jesus is the reason for the season. But I saw another sign that was better that said Jesus Christ is here. The reason you should shout is because Jesus is here. Then we find God allows Mary, after, Jesus, after, after Mary says, be it unto me. 
We find that God allows Elizabeth to come and show Mary a miracle. Third reason why Mary knew she could, Jesus was her all in all is because God, if you want to, will allow you to see a miracle. He'll let you know I'm still in the miracle business. You know, there's so many Christians out there. I don't understand why you, you're, you're afraid to ask for a miracle until you're down to your last, until you're, you don't have nowhere else to go. What makes you think you're going to believe for a miracle then? Here's what, here's what God did. He showed Mary came and the baby jumped in Elizabeth's womb because of the fact that uh, Mary, who was pregnant with Jesus, and it was a blessing that they were sitting there seeing the blessings of God. Her barren, you know, saw Elizabeth who was barren, now full birth with a child ready to give birth. Watch this. It's a blessing. Mary obeyed because God showed her he can still do a miracle. But that's not all. If you know God can allow you to see a miracle, then you also know you can be a miracle. Saints who get off the roller coaster know that if God did it for somebody else, he can do it for me. He's that kind of God. It's no accident. The last thing Mary said in that verse, he said, and all generations will call me blessed. One thing I know, the reason I don't give up, the reason I don't give in, the reason I've been down but not out, the reason I made a comeback, the reason I always find a way up, the reason when I look around, I know one thing that Mary said, I am blessed. Now, I know somebody out there agrees with me. I don't know what else is going on. There may be a virus out there. I may have had some tough days, but I can surely look back and celebrate. I'm blessed. There's some things I got out of somebody else didn't get out of. I made a comeback from stuff somebody didn't make a comeback from. I have been blessed by some things that I thought were going to kill me, but God used them to make me better. I've been blessed. Whenever you get down, you ought to tell yourself how blessed you are. Second thing we know, not only did she accept him as an all in all, we found out that the next verse, if you look with me, verse 49, she said, for he is, the mighty has done great things to me and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength to his arm. He has put down the mighty from their seats. Mary said, I'm special. That's what she said. Special. Mary knew that something that somebody else who like me knows, I can look back over my life as bad as it's been, and I know God had his hand on me. It's somebody else that I'm talking about. I know I'm not crazy, not by myself. Can't you look back and see that uh, some things I tried to do I couldn't do like everybody else? And, and what, I, know, I don't know why I was sinning, but God had his hand on me. Here is Mary. Pregnant, no husband, about to be excommunicated. She had a nerve to say, but I'm special to God. The reason most saints fall is you forget how special you are to God. Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 try to make us know how blessed we are, the fact that we're chosen. It says you he has chosen from the foundation of the world that you can be blameless in him. Oh! So, I come to tell you something you might not know. You blood smoking, Bacardi drinking, Miller Lite chugging, Miller Lite chugging, fornicating, motel hopping, lying, uh, whatever else you did, I come to tell you, God knew you were going to do it, and you're special. Raise your hand, because here's where you're special. From the foundation of the world, he chose me. He saw everything, but he didn't care. Mary said, he had mercy on me. So that means, devil, you can't hold me, because I know how special I am. To God. Please hear me today. The reason you shouldn't be crying and sitting there like you ain't got no help because God chose you and he wouldn't have chose you if you know what you've done, but God blessed you anyhow. Man, every one of us up here, if you open a door, if you open some mind, a skeleton popping out. I don't have a right to talk about nobody, but oh, how good it feels to know I've been blessed by God and the fact that I'm special. I don't know why I'm special. The Bible said he chose me. All you need to do is celebrate the fact 
that he chose you because you're special and not because of what you've done. Look, I got a little demonstration for you. See, here's a $20 bill. It's a demonstration where uh, this guy was speaking in front of an auditorium and he told them, he said, I got $20 here. How many of you want it? And everybody raised their hand in the auditorium. So he took the $20 bill and he crumpled it up. He said, I got $20 bill here, but it's, it's, it's all wrinkled and crumpled. How many of you still want it? They still raised their hand. And then all of a sudden, he threw it on the floor and he stumped on it. Stumped on it again. He said, I got a $20 bill here. It's wrinkled and it's been stepped on. How many of y'all want it? And they raised their hand. Then he took the bill, straightened it out. He said, isn't it funny that you understand a wrinkled, crumpled, stepped on $20 bill? You know why you still wanted it? Because it still has value to you. Can I help you? The reason God still wants you because he chose you for a purpose. You may be wrinkled. You may be crumbled up. You may be dirty by the world's standard. But here is why you should learn how special you are. Is because you have value to God. Oh, people sometimes don't want me. But I got value to God. Sometimes I don't like me. But I got value to God. As you're sitting there right now, somebody should have perked up and understand I'm special because I have value to God. And you got to ride that specialness. You ought to know the story of Glenn Cunningham. Uh, there was an old country church and there was a man, a little boy who was, his duty was to go in and start the pot belly stove. Well, somebody had put kerosene in the place of the oil that was supposed to be in there and a big fire broke out. His brother was killed and Glenn was burned all over his body. The doctors looked with all the flesh that was burned and said, he'll never walk again. And he was laying in the bed and part of his knees and his down to his, and everything was burned. And they said, surely you're going to be a cripple. He sat in bed and started thinking, I'm going to be a cripple. Now, little Glenn was a believer. And he started telling himself he was special. So his mom watched me, took him outside. And when he got outside, he was in a wheelchair when he wasn't in the bed. But when he got outside, for anybody could know, he threw himself on the grass and started crawling with his burned legs. And they let him. And he kept telling his mom, I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk. I know God made me to walk. And all of a sudden, his favorite verse was Isaiah 40, verse 31. They that wait on the Lord. He would keep repeating that verse. He would keep telling himself how special he was. I was made for more than this. And then it got so bad that he made a, a mark, almost a track around the fence. He would hold on. Then he got enough nerve to get up and make that same trip instead of dragging. He just dragged his legs on the fence. Then pretty soon he started walking and limping with one leg. And then after limping with one leg, he started walking with two legs. And then all of a sudden, a wonder to the doctors, a wonder to everyone else. Check it out. Glenn Cunningham ran. Not only did Glenn Cunningham run. If you check the record book, he was the first man to run a sub five minute mile. In the Olympic, he set an Olympic record, several records. And if you asked him how, listen, he said, I know I was made for more than this. Can I help somebody? You weren't made to go out like this. You weren't made to give up now. You weren't made to let the devil win. Don't you dare when you were made special by God. So we found out that Mary said, uh, I'm special. Let me close. The last verses we've read says this, and it blesses me because Mary said, I accept the fact that God is my all in all. I accept the fact that I'm special. Then he said, I accept the fact that God is going to bring it to pass. Look what she said. Here's how we know God's going to do it. The last verses of her song says, he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich have went away empty. This verse pre uh, preached by itself. He said, he has filled the hungry. Anytime you're hungry for God, 
If you're listening to me today, if you're listening to me today, and you just shut off and say, I want God more than I want anything else. God is greater than my doubt. God is greater than my fear. God said, I always feel the hungry. God said, I will give you what you need. He said, the rich, those who are already filled up, those who are on that roller coaster, up and down, can't make up your mind. You'll never get blessed because you'll never make or take a stand. She said he fills the hungry. And then she said not only that, he hath helped the servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake it through the fathers of Abraham. Look what it says. It preaches itself. He has helped the servants of Abraham. I'm closing right now. I want you to hear me as I close. He has helped the servants of Abraham. If you belong to God, whatever you need will come to pass. Mary found herself on an emotional ride out of nowhere, pregnant by God. Out of nowhere, followed the law, but found herself guilty of doing a tremendous sin. And yet, she still trusted God. Be it unto me. I'm your handmaid. Be it unto me, as you said. Said God helps his servants. She believed that. Because of where she had been. God's going to bring it to pass. And finally, the last verse of this great soliloquy says, As he spake to our fathers, Abraham, an American painter named John Sargent painted this beautiful picture of flowers. And it, it was some of his best work. So he was offered a lot of money for this picture. It was so realistic. But you know what? It meant so much to him that he held on to it. And when ever he found himself doubting or discouraged about where he was in life and his abilities to paint, he would pull out that picture and he'd hold it up and say, I did that. That's what I'm telling you today. Every time Mary will get discouraged on this journey. You remember she had to ride a donkey, pregnant, uncomfortable, could find nowhere to lay her head, could find nowhere to have a baby. Maybe Joseph said it's not worth it. They had to run from Herod. All these things. I bet in those nine months a lot of mess happened. But this is what she said. In her confidence, she starts saying no. When she looked down. She would say, God did that. You want to know how to get off your spiritual roller coaster by knowing it's going to come to pass? Whenever you lose confidence, just say to yourself, think back to what God did. Uh, I was sick, God healed me. God did that. Oh, uh, when, I, when I look for a miracle, it's a miracle that I'm still here. God did that. When I think back to the nights when I thought I was going to perish, God kept me those nights. What am I saying? It's going to come to pass. Can I help you? In the end of this year, going into this new year, tell yourself, I'm getting off. I've been on this roller coaster too long. Up, down, up, down. I made up my mind. God is a God that will do what he said. He's a God of absolutes, and I absolutely trust him. So this Christmas, I hope as you're reading the Christmas story, you see Mary in a different light. You understand, wow, she must have been going crazy in her mind. But she settled it by saying, be it unto me. Tell God that. Lord, everything you have to me, let it happen. Let's pray. Father God, one of your servants, somebody listening, they found themselves in such anguish, such doubt, such problem, uh, despair. They didn't know how they were going to get out. They look at their situation and think, wow, the mountain's getting bigger. But Lord, please allow them to see this little virgin Jewish girl who changed her life and ours by saying, let it be as you said. Be it unto me. Let them in their hearts say, God, right now, I settle this issue. I'm not only going to trust you because you said it, 
I'm going to act on it because you said it. This year, I'm getting off. Amen. Hope you were blessed by this message today. If you were, write us, get in the chat, let us know. And I just want you to know that um, if you need the Lord, let me pray this prayer with you, even on Christmas. It's a blessed time. Say, Lord God, come on, say it, Lord God, I'm tired of running my life myself. Please come in my heart. And if you do, I believe I'm saved. If you prayed that prayer with us today, God just came in your heart. Everyone from Shiloh Baptist to your household, have a good, blessed Christmas. Share this message with someone. You can tell them, get off that roller coaster because I'm getting off of mine. I trust God. God bless you. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down with the no way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free. I tried it for myself and now I know what he did.